name is Abby and today we are here to talk about a book that I just finished reading a couple days ago that I'm super excited to discuss and that is The One Memory of Flora Banks by Emily Barr. This book is all about a girl named Flora who has a type of amnesia where she pretty much has no short-term memory. Flora has to walk around with this notebook that pretty much has her life story written in it as, as well as notes that she writes on her hands and her arms to kind of help remind her of where she is at that moment, what she's doing, the point of why she is there, and that is her existence. She lives with her mother and father who are very, very overprotective but are very loving. And she also has a brother who left for Paris to join a university over there and has just never really returned. So she doesn't remember him very well because of the short-term memory loss, but she does remember that she just loves him very, very much. This story was definitely dramatic. It caught my attention and I had a really really hard time putting it down. This story pretty much begins he winds up kissing her best friend's boyfriend named Drake on the night that he is leaving Cornwall which is where they live and he is leaving to go to Norway for a like school educational thing. For once in her life that memory of her kissing Drake actually stays in her mind and she doesn't forget it like she forgets so many other things and decides that she needs to go on this impossible mission to Norway to try to find him and find out what other memories she might be able to remember because of him. This story is not like anything I've ever really read before. It is very captivating. It's so funny because this story almost gets annoying in some points because you watch the narrative repeat itself so much and you're kind of just like, okay, come on, can we continue on? And then you always kind of get hit with this realization of, oh my gosh, this is what she just goes through. Like you are literally in Flora's head as, she, as every day she has to remind herself why she's doing what she's doing, where she is. I just felt so much sympathy for Floor this entire time. I was rooting for her this entire time. I really just wanted her to succeed. I, I wound up giving this book a 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I had so much fun with it. So that is really all that I can say in this non-spoiler section. So if you have not read this book, I highly suggest you go on and pick it up, give it a shot, uh, see what you think, and then head on back and we can discuss. So let's go ahead and kind of get into it. One, one story route that I wound up falling in love with so much that I didn't intend to fall in love with was Jacob. So we find out that her brother is very, very sick. He is in Paris. As we learn later on in the book, we find out that he's pretty much been disowned from the family and it was his decision to leave because he could not take seeing their parents pretty much keeping Flora drugged and very subdued all of her life and was finding out that this was not the first time that she had come off of these drugs and took off on adventures because that's what she is. She, she is a traveler. She is an adventurer. And getting to see that side of Flora was so interesting getting to watch as Flora slowly came off the drugs in this adventure and kind of came into her own was such a blessing to get to see and it really kind of does show the dangers of of medicine in this book and I really appreciate that it goes to show that you don't always that medicine can't heal everything and that you just really need to be careful and be knowledgeable about what you're taking and I feel like that is such a good underlying plot that we had that I wasn't anticipating to happen but I really appreciated anyways. I felt so bad for Paige who was Flora's best friend. First all we see her is kind of being the upset friend who thinks that like oh my god, you kissed my boyfriend, we're not friends anymore, when all of a sudden we find out so many more, so much more of her motivations, her being just terrified for Flora, being like, what if this isn't the first time that Drake took advantage of you and you would have no idea, we would have no clue that you could have been taking, that you could have been hurt by him because you can't remember. That The whole book just kind of shows what... A jerk Drake is and I'm really glad that the author didn't make this a fairy tale perfect ending for her and Drake. The whole, the whole time I kind of assumed that this was a race to the finish love story when no this was in fact Flora coming into her own and realizing how much 
how much how much independency she can have how how she can live on her own and it just takes a little bit extra work for her but she's capable this is a book that I actually did not see a lot of the ending coming I was very pleasantly surprised by how surprised I was it's just kind of getting to the point now where I've read so many books that I'm normally pretty good at guessing endings just because there's normally a formula a lot of YA authors use and even though I could definitely sense a pattern in this book that I've seen in other YA books. This one definitely did kind of turn it on its head and I really really appreciated that. I felt so bad for her father near the end of it because you could definitely see that he was wanting to give Flora more opportunity to be more independent and more on her own but the mother was really the one that was like pulling in all the reins. I just really really appreciated the story so much. I, I do think the one thing that kind of made it a four for me and not a five star is the fact that even though the author was trying to show that repetition as you know, this is reality for Flora and we kind of needed to stay in her head. It did get to the point where I was like, okay, we really just need to pick up this pacing a little bit. It did get to the point where I was starting to skim before I would start feeling bad and retrace the pages that I had skipped over. I really liked about the fact that Paige really started to kind of understand what happened by the end of the book and definitely came to Flora's aid and the fact that we learn that Jacob has a boyfriend that he unfortunately had to leave behind when he passed away in Paris and that the boyfriend is very supportive and ready to help Flora in whatever way that he can and then we learn about the doctor at the very end about the fact that Flora had actually met this doctor that is excited to meet her and actually do tests and see what he can do and Jacob is the one that's kind of been like orchestrating all of this just kind of showing what an amazing big brother he is and how much he cares for Flora. I feel like I could just keep talking on and on about the characters and how much I liked them. I felt the same coming out of of that book that I did for everything everything. I felt very like reflective and very like I get it like this is a book that like real like it makes you think and that's how everything everything was for me and that's definitely how the one memory of flora banks turned out for me as well i really just appreciated this book a lot and i'm really glad that i got to read it and if you've somehow made it this far and you still haven't read it and you're not totally spoiled already i highly suggest you pick up and read this book as well the one memory of flora banks by emily barr it is a fantastic read it's a very fast read i read it i think in like two days in between work so it was it's really, really Really fast it's a short just a short read and the adventures that Flora go on really pull you in and I just really really liked it so yes if you guys have read this book and you like it please give this video a thumbs up let me know about your thoughts in the comments down below about this book what were your favorite parts least favorite parts I would love to hear about it and make sure you guys are subscribed because I do make videos every Monday Wednesday and Friday and I will see you guys in my next video goodbye